Hello everybody and welcome to the Dollar Store Dungeons and Dragons Adventure. In this video we're going to take some Dollar Store finds and some crafts that I made from Dollar Store items and put them all together and try to come up with a cohesive adventure. Of course we're going to start out with that amazing bit of cavern terrain that I made from Dollar Store Foam Core as well as some Dollar Store Epoxy for the liquid effects. We got a Dollar Store Halloween Bag of Bones. We got some Dollar Store Flies. These were also, I believe, Halloween things? They were at the Dollar Tree for a very limited time. I'm happy that I got them. They're very big and gross. And they're excellent for cheapo D&D props. And also, we got the Final Faction stuff. I absolutely love the little crawler guys. I think they look really good out of the box with the little golden scabbard guys. They look really nice, and they're going to fit into this adventure very nicely. Look at that. The crappiest paint job ever, and yet, you know what? It still works. And of course, we have the Minecraft Ender Dragon. What a final boss character that'll be. And we also have the Shrek Dragon, which I ended up not using. And finally, a pure impulse buy, this little owl guy that really serves no purpose. I just thought it was cool to see a little owl guy in the dollar store, so I bought him. I shouldn't have, but I'll, I'll try to work him into the adventure somehow. So obviously, basing this on dollar store stuff is going to be a little bit tough, but the little bit of terrain there, already I'm thinking that you know, with all the vermin-type miniatures that I have in the Bag of Bones. My mind already started uh, collecting on the key plot points of this adventure, where there's a cavern with three pools, and for some reason there was a lot of bones, and maybe all of the dead uh, detritus has attracted these weird creatures here. And the dragon, which is clearly not a real dragon. And that's when the plot point clicked in. This is an artificial dragon set up here years ago to protect the magical pools. And just like that, the major plot point of the dungeon crawl was set. And all I had to do was figure out how the heck I'm supposed to include the little owl toy. Also, these things are really cheap. Uh, I got this from the Dollar Tree, and it fell apart as soon as I opened it. Ah, oh, poor little guy. He, he looks so angry, though. I, I, I really... I'm going to just use him as an NPC is the only way we're going to get any use out of this guy. So now we have the bare bones, no pun intended, of this adventure. So now we just have to set up a structure. Only recently have I been sort of investigating how other people do this. I always just do it in a very rough manner. Uh, a lot of people like using the uh, five room dungeon method, which was made famous by John Four. I'll leave that link below. Now, Dungeon Masterpiece actually did a really good video. That video actually talked about the three act structure. And strangely enough, I think that's kind of how I always did my dungeon crawls, even though even if they are technically just a dungeon. You might find both of these helpful, so again, I'm gonna leave links to all of this below so you can check it out yourself. When doing a dungeon crawl like this, I like setting up the three-act structure. So let's go in and show the rough way I set this up and how we are going to get to the climax of the resolution. So obviously, one of the standard setups for my games, small village, uh, they were trying to do something smart. Some of the villagers were trying to solve an issue. Somebody saw this artificial dragon in a nearby cave. So one of the villagers came up with this brilliant idea of dropping off dead animals so the dragon could eat that and not attack the village, even though nobody's ever seen a dragon around the village. This is just something that they decided to do for years. They've just been dropping off dead animals into this cave for so many years now that it's actually started to cause other issues. Players are contacted by a druid, and this druid is unique because they tried to change into an owl bear, but as we all know, druids can't change into owl bears. So their magic went really wrong, and they've been kind of stuck as an owl bear for many years now. 
<laughs> and and so they know all about the mystical properties of this pool and that it used to be considered a great treasure. The person who created the pool created a guardian to keep the pools safe in the cave. And the guardian never attacked anybody. And they're assuming that's what this dragon is. Now villagers have started to go missing. There are monsters clearly coming to and from the cave. This is a great opportunity for players to learn more during this setup. They can talk to the villagers. They can get the villagers to uh, admit that maybe they saw something that clearly wasn't a dragon but still is a monster. They can use survival skills to go check out the footprints coming out of the cave. And the owlbear druid takes off their glasses so the PCs know that they're being serious. And this starts off the first bit of confrontation of this adventure, the Golden Scavengers in the cave. There's going to be several rooms in this cave, of course, and some of the random encounters will be for the lesser creature of the giant black flies, which will be very annoying because they can fly and whatnot, and I'm going to give them a special attack. That'll be a nice ranged attack to annoy the players, but they are not the primary antagonist. Now the players will reach the midpoint of the adventure, the actual magic pools. Now there's going to be several hints that the pools can be used for magical wishes, but the trick is, is that you can only wish for stuff for other people. If you try to wish for something for yourself, then the wish will go horrifically wrong. And so this is kind of like the little puzzle thing if the players took advantage of talking to the villagers, or they explored the cave a little bit more, they could maybe get some clues that this is what happens. And at this point, too, they could also find the giant automaton, artificial dragon that is wandering around the caves near the pools. The dragon won't attack them. The dragon won't really threaten them. It's just sort of walking around. It will protect itself if the players decide to try to destroy it. But other than that, it's just sort of there. It's really going to be up to the players whether they're going to try to use it somehow to their advantage in the final climax. So here we are in the final part of the adventure. The players at this point might think that this is it. They just killed some golden scavengers. They killed the fly. They got access to the pool. And that's it. They're all done. Now... It could go several different ways. Many of the PCs might think, oh, well, we really need to clean up this massive pile of dead animals. Uh, otherwise, these beetle things are just going to keep on coming back. Or they might just start leaving the cave after just saying, good job, people. What they didn't know is that the golden scavenger beetles created a horrific monstrosity with the animal remains that were dropped off here. And that is the skeletal effigy. Yes, of course, this giant thing that I created way back in the day. Technically, this is actually a dollar store craft. It is based around a dollar store toy. This is additive sculpting. So this technically counts. So there you have it. It's only appropriate that my ultimate dollar store crafting project ended up being the final boss of this dollar store inspired adventure. I hope this uh, motivates you to go out to the local dollar store and see if there's anything you can pick up that'll give you some inspiration to create your own adventure. And of course, I'm going to link the videos where I made the cavern terrain and the uh, slightly more expensive uh, skeletal effigy in the description below. But yeah, let me know if you found anything interesting out in the wild that has motivated you to come up with a cool adventure. And let me know what you use to craft your adventures. Do you like using the three-part structure? Do you enjoy using the five-room dungeon method? Is there another method that you enjoy using for crafting your dungeon crawls? Let me know in the comments below.